perhaps one of the most important hindrances to deal with. It's the number one thing I would say is a non-negotiable with God. You know, at the end of the Lord's Prayer and also at the end of where uh, Jesus is talking about that you can cast mountains into the sea uh, if you've got the faith for it. Um, it's at the end of those pages, when you're believing for uh, prayers to be answered or when you're believing for the impossible, like casting mountains into the sea, forgive. If you hold anything against anyone, forgive, so that the Father in heaven forgive, can forgive you. It's telling us you're in a spiritual stalemate with God if you are holding bitterness or forgiveness towards yourself, towards others, or if you blame God for things. And I reckon it's the only thing where I haven't seen God move. I know God, you know, we've prayed for people who've been in sin or they had to deal with various things, and God's healed them, I think, except where people haven't been able to forgive. To forgive. I think it's the one non-negotiable uh, where God won't move or can't complete the healing if there's unforgiveness. Um, so if you wanted just one of those scriptures that I said, Mark 11, 25, and when you stand praying, you will anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven can forgive you. And so this is just so important. Um, and so I'm going to actually say this prayer. This is perhaps one of the most common things I did with John. John, I'd often be at the back of the meeting, selling books, talking to people. But John had sent people to me who needed prayer for things like this or for me to pray for them to see what a hindrance might be. And lead them through prayers to heal lots of stuff. Dealing with being in the forgiveness was the number one thing. But I would see people healed on the spot, even as they said the prayer. Things coming off them as they said the prayer. Mm -hmm. Or they'd be healed immediately after they said yeah. the prayer, when literally five minutes before, when they were at the front, nothing was changing. And one of the most, um, some of the memorable examples of this, not too far from here actually, we're in a church and a lady came, she was quite a young lady. Because she was a younger lady, uh, she needed a double knee replacement. Because she was young, though, they weren't going to operate. I don't know what the reason is. But, okay, so she's in a lot of pain in her knees, very painful. John was praying, nothing was changing, and then God gave John word, you need to forgive someone. And she said, no, I can't forgive him. And John said, who's that? Oh, my father, he sexually abused me. Now, the father was dead, but she couldn't forgive him. So he said, go and see Julie. So she comes to the back explains the situation and I said well uh, I said well with the, with forgiving it doesn't mean you're accepting or condoning whatever happened to you and your father's dead so we can't hurt you now it's just an act of obedience to obey God to put the past and everything it brought to you in his hands but it opens the way for God's grace to come and heal the pain and the sting and the trauma of all that um, that abuse and that heaviness and, and bitterness and so on and she said, no, there's no way I can forgive. I said, would you humor me and just say these words after me? She said, oh, all right. And so she didn't mean it, but I led her through the prayer. And then what happened to her is what happened to me when I was newly saved and I had to forgive someone too. But I wanted my miracle so desperately and I understood, but I understood that I had to forgive this person, otherwise I wasn't going to get healed, that I forced myself to say the prayer. But when I was saying it, Something actually tried to choke me and restrict my throat. Oh, there's a spirit working against that a spirit of bitterness, or I'm given something to set on me because there's so much power and freedom on the other side that it's trying to stop me from saying the prayer. So, when I was leading this lady through this prayer, she started doing that. I've seen a lot of people, this happened to a lot of people. She was having trouble opening her mouth and saying the words because something was choking her. So, I understood what was happening. So, I just explained to her, this is, I said, there's a spirit. Uh, I've been something given us trying to stop you from saying the prayer because there's so much power in us. We push through. So this prayer only takes like 30 seconds, less than a minute to say. But it took like five minutes for her to spit out each word. She was reluctantly saying it, yes. But she still, I went through it with it for five minutes. She was spitting out every word because it's thing. And then she went on. But she went back to the front and John prayed for her and her knees were healed instantly, even though she'd said the prayer without, well, not from the heart. That was on a Sunday morning, so she went on. Then, Sunday evening, we had a meeting in the same church. She bounds in, she comes straight to me, beaming, and said, Julie, I've had the most amazing day. My husband said, what's happened to you? I've never seen you like this. I've never seen you smile before. What's going on? And then she said, oh, I don't know these feelings. She's feeling joy because she hadn't had joy because she's been abused since she was a child. And she said, oh, she said, can I say that prayer? This time I want to say it and mean it because what will happen then? 
She had this amazing day, even though she said it through gritted teeth. And that was just God's grace, showing her the power of that. So then she wanted to say from her heart, because she said, what will happen then? Um, and so she got the knees healed, but also she was healed in her emotions. But I think maybe that was more important to God, to lift that, to, to release that cap, because the father was dead, he couldn't hurt her anymore. Um, that's so important. So I'm going to lead you through this prayer. So whether it's for anyone here who needs to forgive themselves um, or others or have blamed God, this, you can also just to show you, you can lead others who are struggling with this uh, as well. And reminding them that the forgiveness is a decision to obey God. And sometimes people confuse the decision with hurt memories and emotions. It's separate. You can still have the, the hurt memories and emotions will still be there. That's then what you need to be praying for healing of. And God can heal that and He can take the pain out of those things, even though it seems impossible to imagine that. If you've been living in this pain and tormenting memories for decades, God can do it. I know because He took the pain out of this particular memory and incident for me. I didn't think it would ever happen, but it does. Um, so this is powerful. So I'm going to lead you through this prayer half a line at a time. And I'll leave a little place just to whisper the names of anyone you might need to forgive. And also it's good to whisper what it is you're forgiving them for, just to be specific in prayer. So let's all say it out loud to cover anyone who might actually need to forgive themselves or someone else today. So Lord Jesus, in your name, I come before you to repent of unforgiveness, bitterness and resentment, I've held towards others, myself, and you, God. I want to obey you, and I choose to forgive. Now whisper the names of anyone you're forgiving, and whisper what it is you're choosing to forgive them for. I put these people into your hands, Lord. Please bless and heal them. And please forgive me. Release me. Bless me. And heal my memories and emotions. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. When I saw a lady once, I led that prayer. I had my hand on one or hand on a hand, maybe one on her chest like that. And I do wish I'd looked down at her feet because she rose like a foot off the ground. She was a long-term Christian, but she had trouble forgiving herself for having had an abortion years before. And it was a spirit of shame and guilt that had tapped on her. So she knew the principle. But she just had to resolve to pray and leave it with God. If you just needed permission from someone else to say, come on, we're leaving it in God's hands this time. And I, and I did pray off the spirit of guilt and shame. She raised like a foot off the ground. And then the next day she came, she was related to Florence in some way. She was like a foot taller. She was 10 years younger. And she'd sort of been sort of very quiet and sort of cowed over. She was like radiant and she looked totally different. Mm -hmm. After that, the power of prayer, the power of a simple prayer and choice to forgive and also just the power of God's connection.